Words of inspiration and hope. I says, oh, I'm now I'm live. I'm a little early there. I jumped the gun. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is brought to you by the good guys at the 6 webinarcom Today, we got two wonderful guests on today. We got Mr. Dustin Matthews and we got Judy. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce Judy Thurison's last name correctly. I, I usually mispronounce last names, mis, mispronounce them correctly the first time. But they're going to be sharing a lot of great stories about us. I first met Judy when we had the original webinar series, The Message of Inspiration and Hope. And she came on and she shared her very touching sto story about losing her 18-year-old son, but how she turned that around and how she's blessing others. She's going to share some of that and some more with us today. Mr. Dustin Matthews will be our first guest. He's going to talk about his background, some of the things he's learned. He's an expert marketer. He's a public speaker. Just uh, He's going to give us a lot of uh, information about himself and, and just share some interesting facts. But right now, we've got to play a little message here to help pay some bills. We'll be right back right after this brief, short message. Hi, and welcome to the Messages of Inspiration and Hope Show that's proudly sponsored by the 6-Minute Webinar. Today, we have some exciting and very interesting guests, real people just like you and me. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Now, here's Jim. Hey, thank you so much. That's some of our music we recorded uh, all back when I was young and good looking, but we hope you enjoy that music as part of our theme song here for our show. But today, we're, our first guest is Mr. Dustin Matthews. Let me bring him to the, um, invite him to the show here. Hey, Dustin, how you doing, hey. sir? Howdy, I'm doing great. Yourself? Doing good. So glad to have you. You and I, we go back a few years, don't we? Wow, well, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, how, how many years do we go back? Oh, four, <laughs> three or four, something like that. Maybe more, I don't know. Well, Jim, you're you're so uh, you're so good at creating relationships and going for the ask that I'm here today uh, in an incomplete office. You're looking at the background and you're you're seeing the brick walls uh, here. Uh, I'm in my uh, office, and uh, you just said, you know, you got to show up, you got to be on the show. They don't care, and so here we are today, and I'm uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, but uh, next next time, I'll be all dolled up for you. I hear you. I told him, don't worry about it, ladies and gentlemen. I says, all you got to do is smile. All the young ladies that look, just look at you and say, wow, look at that good looking guy. The, the one wearing the headset, not me, of course. That's why, that's why I got the mountains behind me. But Dustin, I tell you right now, the thing that really impressed me about you the very first time that I met you was how humble and how open and honest you are and just very easy to know. That's yeah. what really that's what really impressed me about you, brother. And, uh, you know, you uh, I was kind of surprised such a great speaker that you are. At one time you were actually afraid of public speaking. <laughs> that's right. You know, I uh, you know, it was at university. So uh, I don't know what it's like now uh, for kids these days. But when I uh, when I was going to school, one of the things that you had to take was uh, public speaking in order to graduate. It didn't matter if you were going to be an engineer, uh, if you were going to be, you know, a health scientist. It, it didn't matter. You just had to take this class. And so mm -hmm. I signed up for it like everyone else did. And uh, I remember the first day I walk into this auditorium and there's 300 people sitting. Aww. And uh, Jim, it was like uh, a stadium seating. So it was mm -hmm. cascading. So it almost felt like you were in a pit. Uh, mm. you know, like an amphitheater. This is yeah. this is how public speaking is done. Uh, yeah. But you know, when you're you're walking in for the first time, it, it's pretty intimidating. And so I kind of mm. look around, and finally the teacher comes out and says, "Listen, you're going to have to give you know ten talks this semester." And the good news is, you only have to do two of them up here in front of all three hundred people. The rest are going to be in smaller breakouts. And I, I'm looking around and I'm saying, uh, "Did anyone else hear this?" And so I left. <laughs> uh, I'm like, you know what? I'll take this class later. Maybe I can find a smaller class. And uh, long story short, I had to take this class. So I sign up again and I find myself in the same part of campus. I find myself in the same room. It's the same spiel and there's no getting out of it. And so I'd like to tell you, I took that class and I conquered it. I'm an amazing speaker now, but uh, I retreated again because the fear had gripped me so tight. And so I did some work. And I think it's funny in life when people get motivated by something, you can move mountains. And that's exactly what mm -hmm. I did. I found a loophole in the student handbook, which no one reads. 
and uh, found that loophole when I was able to get out of public speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, the irony in the story is I would go on to create a company many, many years later, teaching people how to publicly speak. Uh, not only me being a speaker, but now mm -hmm. teaching others how to do it, the thing I was deathly afraid of. And so I think that's like life. You know, we've got obstacles and challenges and sometimes we run from them. Sometimes mm -hmm. we go in head on and that's where all the growth happens. You're absolutely correct, because I remember when I was in the third grade, the teacher just and I didn't know anything about speaking or and being in front of a class. And the teacher says, we're going to give oral book reports. And it just fear just immediately gripped me. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, no. And I figured, well, everything that I came up with, she had already slammed the door on. I figured, well, on that day, I'm supposed to give the, you know, the oral book report. I'll call in sick or not call in, but just tell my mother I'm sick and that's good to go. <laughs> and she said, well, if you're, if you're sick that day, we just rescheduled you. I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. you know? Only thing I really read in those days was comic books. And then she put salt on the wound, says, you got to go to the school library, check out a book, bring it back. And I'll, you know, write it down. And you got to read that book and give a report on it. <laughs> oh, man, this is getting ugly. <laughs> so I went into the library and guess what kind of a book I was looking for? You're looking for a picture book. Well, that too. But I was also <laughs> looking for the, I walked in, I thought, where do they keep the thin books? I wanted the thin <laughs> book. <laughs> and it was an awful experience for me. And it kind of uh, shaped my life for decades. Then when I came back off of Operation Desert Storm, serving in the reserves for all those years, my unit went away. And the only unit I could find was with the reserve school, a school of instructors. Mm. And I thought, my goodness, when did this seem like a good idea? But little did I know that that would change my life. And it's amazing when you face a fear. You know, a lot of people don't know the fear of speaking. It's called glossophobia. Mm -hmm. Glosso meaning the tongue. But when you face your fears and you just, you know, so I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to bite the bullet on this thing. I'm just going to face it. And it's amazing how things just open up for you, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Whether, you know, I found, you know, it could be, you know, I, I was also deathly afraid of writing because I remember when I was a kid uh, just staying up all hours of the night. I was behind on writing that paper. And I just remember uh, having that fear and overcoming that. And, uh, I think no matter, you know, if you're coming to this show and you're thinking, Hey, listen, uh, I want to be an entrepreneur or I just want to be, you know, uh, an inspirer of people, or I want to help build a community. Uh, it's really about tackling fears. And like you said, glossophobia, the, uh, the fear of public speaking is something that I think a lot of people can relate to, but I also mm -hmm. want to challenge people. It's those that want to make a difference in the world, uh, mm. in, in, in their, in the world, in the community, in business, whatever it is, uh, whatever that means for you, uh, being uh, a powerful public speaker is a very great strategy uh, for that. But really, the bigger message is, you know, we're all going to come across fears, new things that we have to overcome and just, you know, stay down and, and keep getting after it. You're exactly right, because most times when, we, when we're faced with fear, we're looking inward. Mm -hmm. But if we look how we can be a blessing to someone on the outward, you know, going forward, that's when all the hurdles and everything just seem to be just minute. I mean, cause yeah. it just, because you're focused on helping others in their hour of need. And that's what really what we're supposed to do here on planet Earth. I mean, yeah. and when you live in fear, you enslave yourself, you know. That's true. You know, Jim, I want to add in one, one thing here because you, know, you hear that sometimes and you, and you say, you know, focus, focus on the others. And, you know, you, you may do that for a split second. Uh, some of us, you know, we can get a couple minutes. Uh, and if you're really, you know, kicking on all cylinders, you know, you're not thinking about yourself. But the ego has a way of, of pulling it. You know, am I looking good? Uh, man, I really hope I, I, I give them the message that they, that, that they need to hear. Uh, and, and one of the things that's helped me uh, tremendously is this idea of detachment, which has been a struggle for me. Uh, because, you know, as an entrepreneur, as somebody that likes to, to get results, I want to win. I, I want to get the outcome. And so sort of the juxtaposition or the opposite of that is being detached, which is it's something I still grapple with. Like, how can I go out there and serve the greatest amount of people, but yet be detached? And so acknowledging it and saying, listen, whatever happens, happens. It doesn't mean be flippant. Don't do your homework. Don't put the time in. It just means like detach from the situation. Like you're going to go out and do your thing, whatever your thing is for that day, but just detach from the outcome. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And when you do that, it removes the stress, it removes the anxiety, and it helps us get a, a lot further. Uh, but uh, what, the one thing I, I want people to consider is, is keep that mind, keep that word in mind, detachment, detachment. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, th- uh, thinking back uh, about all the things I've heard you say and all that, because I know you're an entrepreneur, you have an entrepreneurial heart. Did you start out like that or, or is it something that you backed into or do you have a desire? Or how'd that happen? Well, you know, growing up, my mother had always done entrepreneurial things. She she worked in corporate America, but she would always uh, make ceramics and she'd go to uh, a fair and sell them. Uh, she introduced me to eBay right when it was getting and going. And so she always had these these little endeavors. And so I, I kind of just absorbed that. I didn't think anything of it. But I remember being in school and I, I wanted to pay for certain things. So I'm a, I'm a big tennis, I love tennis. And so I would buy and sell tennis items on eBay to make some extra money. Money. And so I got my, my first little taste of that, but it wasn't until I read uh, the book Rich Dad Poor Dad while I was at school that I said, huh, th- there's something to this. And uh, although that book kind of focuses on real estate, it really is how do you set your own course in life? How do you think outside the box? And so that book really set a, a new path for me coming out of school. And that's where I got I stepped into this world of entrepreneurship by offering to do something for free and in exchange for the knowledge and values uh, that I would get and experience along the way. And once you become an entrepreneur, like I tell people, you're no longer uh, would make a good employee. It just doesn't go together any more than snow at harvest time. I mean, you just might as well forget it because if the entrepreneurial bug bite bites you, you're bitten. And I tell people that uh, when I started my manufacturing business, I'd get up early and I'd work late and I'd work on weekends all for the same amount of money. Yep. But it was the it was the love and the passion that you had. And that's the secret in, in life to be successful and happy is not necessarily being an entrepreneur, but having the love and the passion to do what it is that you want to do, what your calling is. Oh, man, I tell you. And you've done a great job in helping people uh, develop their their talents. I mean, it, even though I was an instructor for 12 years and I spoke on stage from starting back in 2000, small groups, you know, 10 or 12 people up to several hundred. But you really helped me hone my skills when I went down to, uh, you know, speaking empire, because you were the one of the co-founders of that. That's right. And you always look for ways of self-improvement, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we started that business, I, I think it was so fitting because uh, I still had my path to go in, in mm-hmm. developing speaking. And so there's nothing like, you know, if you if you find yourself in that place of fear, there's something like setting a goal with the fear attached to it. And what I mean by that was like, here I was afraid of speaking still, and yet here I am jumping into starting a company, teaching others how to do it. Now, I had a partner in it that was more adept than me, so it wasn't like I was just blindly doing it. So I, I was thinking uh, smartly, so to say, but also at the same time, I had other value to add into that equation as well. So I brought the marketing knowledge and insights that people need to get in front of an audience. And so uh, what I would tell people, to do is is that as that same message is you know sit back think about how can i make this happen you know what are Mm -hmm. different ways and so that's what i did i knew i wanted to start a business i found a partner uh even though there was a lot of fear when we first got started it's just getting on that train and going Mm -hmm. yeah i remember when i first became an instructor i i was going to be teaching things that i hadn't touched in over oh gosh This was in 1993. I hadn't seen any of that stuff in over 20 years. I'm thinking, oh, man, we're talking signals equipment. So how much is the signal equipment changed in 20 years? Electronics. (laughs) I'm thinking, oh, man, this is going to be a train wreck. And uh, I remember talking to an older instructor, and I says, how am I going to put on a class like this? He says, just remember one thing. You will be the best student that you had because you're going to get more out of that class because you're going to work and you're going to prepare and you're going to learn. Absolutely. And you're going to be a man. Yeah. And I get up there in my first year and I t- teach and all that. And my second year, there's some students coming back and they're going to another class. And they says, hey, you're going to be our instructor. And I says, no, I'm still teaching this class. Oh, wow. You were the best instructor we had last year. I go like, really? Wow. You know, I mean, it just it, it just came out of nowhere. It surprised me. I mean, because I didn't think I was that good. In fact, I knew I wasn't that good. 
But, you know, you're always, I guess in that regard, you kind of look at yourself a little harder than other people do because you're always trying to, okay, not not look at all the things that you did good, but the things you didn't do good, you know. That seems to yeah. really, you know, bounce around on you. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would, I would say that you had that curiosity, you know, you got in, you were excited, you brought that energy, uh, but you had that curiosity of like, you know, what, what makes for a good teacher, what mm -hmm. makes for a good curriculum, you mm -hmm. know, and so you brought that energy and that passion, but you also brought that curiosity of how can I make this uh, an amazing experience uh, for the students and that those things combined will carry you in a lot of situations. Now, again, that's not an excuse or don't do your homework, don't put the time right. in that uh, before, beforehand. But if you just bring that energy, you bring that curiosity to a lot of things in life, it's going to get you so far. Oh, yeah, it really will. And uh, I want to ask you a question. I'd like for you to share with the folks out there something that maybe no one else would, uh, or very few people know about you or <laughs> share something like it. You know, what is some, just name one thing that no one knows much about. In your life. Wow. Well, you know, I, I usually when I get to ask this question, you know, a lot of people don't know I was born in uh, Japan in Okinawa, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they needed a president, I could still do it. And the reason why I was born on uh, U.S. soil, a military base. Uh, <laughs> so oftentimes I will share that. What's something else uh, that I haven't quite shared uh, man, before? Man, this is a, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. I think you know, uh, in life, I've always run from certain things. So uh, I'm a creative. And so for me, numbers have been a challenge. And so I would say over the last three to five years, I've really been focusing. Uh, and you might, you might see this on the surface, but not know where this comes from. Uh, mm -hmm. I just haven't been great with finances. I haven't been good with uh, the analytics side of marketing, looking at all uh, the numbers and the metrics and all that. And so I made a commitment over five years ago to get better at it. And I still mm -hmm. think I'm a big work in progress <laughs> when it comes to it because my, uh, what do I want to say? My focus where I want to go is, hey, let's get creative, let's talk strategy, let's brainstorm, let's mastermind. And I've done a lot of that and I carry that, but if I wanna get better as a person, as an individual, I gotta take a look at how can I get stronger there. Now, it doesn't mean I'm gonna be great in those areas, but I gotta have enough knowingness so that I can talk and that I can outsource it, give it, hand it off to somebody. And so I would say that sort of the fear of numbers is uh, something that people, Jim, probably wouldn't know about me is that, wow. that fear uh, that I'm currently working on. Absolutely. I see down there on that your email is uh, author at DustinMatthews.com. I know you're an author. What are some of the, what are the books that you've written? If I'd like for you to share with the folks today. <laughs> well, it goes back to you, John. I'm glad you asked that. It goes back to, I remember being in fifth grade and it was, you know, 10 o'clock at night, which just seems really late, you know, for a kid. And I'm mm -hmm. crying, at, uh, trying to come up with something to turn in and my parents are reading it and they're giving me critique and I'm just not getting it. And so I went from that kid uh, to have written over six different books, uh, you know, overcoming uh, overcoming that fear. And I didn't know that I went at the start of this, I was gonna write six books, but just opportunities came along. So mm -hmm. one of the uh, most recent books is the No BS Guide to Powerful Presentations, mm -hmm. which I wrote with a mentor of mine who I started studying and following 10 years. And I said, one day, I planted that seed. I said, one day, uh, I'm going to work with him. I'm going to write, I'm going to do something together. And I, I didn't know it would be write a book. And so that was one of the most recent books. Uh, I also wrote another one called the ultimate success secret, which mm -hmm. talks about the different strategies, the different things that people, uh, that are successful, they come across and use. And I say, listen, is there a pattern that we can take a look at copy and put into our own lives? And so that was the ultimate success secret. Hmm. So how could folks get their hands on one of those books? Do they get them on Amazon or? Uh... Sure. Yeah. Amazon's probably going to be the best way. Uh, they can check out DustinMatthews.com. There's a few links on there. You can see all the different uh, books uh, that are available uh, on that site as well. And you were, uh, after you left the Speaking Empire, you were with, uh, was it WellFit? You're, That's you're right. With Wellfit. Yeah. What attracted right. you to them? <laughs> well, that fear of numbers. 
So, uh, you know, having exited Speaking Empire, so I built a business for nine years. That would that would mm -hmm. be Speaking Empire, and right. then exited it. Uh, I knew that I needed to challenge myself in a different area, and so I said, after nine years, I, I've seen a lot. Not that I, you know, there's not more to do, but I said I want to go in a different direction, and I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship is is you get that opportunity. I think a little bit more flexible uh, mm -hmm. to go and pursue different things, and I said, you know, it'd be real easy to go start something similar. But I said, why don't I look for something that really helps me grow as a person that I can bring the past skills, the marketing skills, mm -hmm. bring those forward. But I want to learn something. Like, I want to get something out of this environment. And so whether you're employed, you got to be thinking that too, or, or you're an entrepreneur, like what's the next area, what's the next business you can open in that, mm -hmm. in that area that you can grow. And so WellFit was dedicated to personal finance. And so right. this was an area, you know, for me, uh, Jim, the solution was, I'm just going to go sell something. I'm just going to go create something and just make it rain and that'll help me. Well, mm -hmm. if you're if your boat is leaking, right? If there's a hole in the bucket, you're just going to keep spinning on that treadmill. So I said, you know, I got to get smarter. I can still make it rain, but let's get smarter, right? Let's use personal finance. Let's let's track and manage our money. Let's invest that money so that it grows. And so that's what I saw in WellFit. Mm. I'm going to share a little story with you, Dustin. I don't know if uh -oh. you, I don't you know. This is on me. So you can sit back and take a break. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know how I wound up meeting you at speaking empire or anything like that. We had that event in Orlando. I remember you, I know you remember that event. That's right. And uh, I was invited to go down there and, you know, I didn't want to go. And it's one of those deals that kept gnawing at me. You know, yeah. you need to go, you need to go. And I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Orlando and spend all that money. Here's some guy get up on stage, talk about how great he is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it kept gnawing at me. I knew I had to go. Then, then my ego kicked in. I says, okay, I'll go under one condition. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to change my life. Mm. Little did I know. And that was the actual words that I said to myself, but little did I know that that's exactly what happened. I go down there and I meet you guys. And I said, wow, this is it. This is where I need to be. And then that's where I met Mr. Don McGrath. That's right. Speaking. I remember. Yeah. And Bill Heinrich. And we're all family. I go like, oh, man, I should have been down here 29 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good of a deal it was for me, man. But my you know, point, it, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, if you just put yourself in the environment, a lot of times we have these preconceived notions and rightly mm -hmm. so. I, I remember why you, you know, the, the nature of that conference was one thing, yeah. but you know, what showed up was something different. And, you know, yeah. we do our best to try to figure out where we ought to place ourselves, but mm -hmm. sometimes you just can't calculate it. You can't know. And so if you feel that urge or you, and you can't really explain it, you just got to follow it, put yourself in sure. the environment and see what happens. It could be something completely yeah. different like exactly. it was for you. That's like what I tell people when we got together uh, just to create the messages of inspiration and hope the webinar series and Judy, the next guest, she was one of the key people on there. She's, she's a big part of the success of it. We just did it because we were all locked down. We couldn't go anywhere. Right. And uh, <laughs> one of my military buddies sent me a, a picture of a roll of toilet paper with Wilson on it, you know, <laughs> like the volleyball in that movie, <laughs> whatever. Were they plane crash and all? That's you right. Know? With Tom Hanks. Yeah. 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 And uh, we just decided to put it on. But little did we know that this show was going to create its own energy. And it got recognized by Tamara Hunter. She, she knew about it. But she says, hey, this would be a great fit for E360 TV. And she mentioned to Aaron Hymas, the president. He took a look at it. And he told Tamara, get uh, get uh, Jim on the phone. He says, I'd like to set up an appointment with him. And we talked about it, and he liked my philosophy. And so here we are. Because if people think that I had anything to do with it, let me tell you right up front, it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> All I did was just introduce the host, and that was it. But the energy and the people um, like, like Judy that's going to be on next, she was a big part of the energy that got created because of, you know, just reaching out to other people in our hour of need. And we just did it because we couldn't do anything yep. else. <laughs> you know, basically, I mean, that's about the way it came down. I'd, I'd like to make it sound more glamorous than that. But I mean, 
That's how it happened. We just want to know how we could reach out and help people in their hour of need. And my goodness. So, Dustin, when people go to your website there, let me put it back up here again. Mr. Uh -oh. DustinMatthews.com. What can <laughs> they uh, what would they get out of that other than getting to know more of more about you? Because you're a great guy and all that. But well, they, they should be able to. They should be able to see a couple past interviews uh, I've done. I've, I've inter mm -hmm. uh, interviewed some rather interesting people, from sports stars uh, to just uh, scientists and mm -hmm. all sorts of folks, just trying to figure out, you know, what's something that we can take from each person and leverage as a strategy just to get better or just to learn or have more fun and happiness in mm. life. And so uh, over on DustinMatthews.com, you should be able to access uh, past interviews. Uh, if you have mm. any interest in public speaking or marketing, you'll find some resources yeah. there as well. And if you want to get a hold of me, you can uh, find all the cool social media icons uh, oh. on DustinMatthews.com. Oh, yeah. As I remember when you uh, interviewed uh, Danica Patrick, I, uh, I watched that interview <laughs> because I was honing in on my uh, interviewing skills at that time by watching <laughs> you. <laughs> no, but it was a real great. And, and that's an interesting story in itself because uh, you were you thought uh, just go ahead and share that with the folks, if you would, because you thought. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, I was going to an event. I said, well, you know, I'm going to go learn. But I, I, you know, we had a podcast at the time and I said, you know, I might as well try to interview. So I was uh, I told you I'm a tennis fan. So uh, Sharapova, Maria Sharapova was there and I had my eyes set on interviewing. So I'm reaching out, I'm reaching out and mm -hmm. nothing's happening. Right. A week before the event, I'm like, oh, yeah, Danica Patrick, you know, you know, she's you know, winning as female race hard driver of all time. I should probably reach out to, to her. And it's amazing because right when I did that, I was able to get through. I had some hurdles to jump through, fly all the way to New York. I go to sit down to, to interview. Uh, her PR person says, who are you? And I'm like, I'm the person you talked to on the phone in a rage. And she's like, oh, I thought we were doing this on the phone. And she's like, wait a minute. Give me a second. Let me go talk to Danica in the green room. Goes, talks to Danica, comes back eight minutes. Uh, she says, listen, I can give you eight minutes. And Jim, what do you think I said? Well, you know, the end of the story. I said, yeah, I'll take any time I can get. So mm -hmm. I was able to interview her and she was a trooper and she gave us 15 minutes and wow. uh, just amazing. So, oh yeah, that's a, that's a that's a great story. The reason why I wanted you to share that is because you went the extra mile, and uh, that's what it takes in life. Just just put forth your best foot, and you'll go the extra mile. And don't worry about the consequences because if it, it's going to work out perfectly, it may not right. be the way you picture it, but it's it's still going to be perfect in the long run, isn't it? Right. Well, Dustin, we got about one minute left with you, and I'd like for you to share anything you'd like to with the audience before we go to commercial break, sir. Yeah, absolutely. You know, whatever your goal is in life, I always say, you know, if you came here and your goal is to, to lose weight, that, you know, uh, that's fine. That, that's great. Maybe you want to start a business. OK, that's that's great. Or maybe it's just to be a better human, a, a better person, a better father, a better mother, uh, a better child, uh, you know, brother, sister, whatever it is, whatever your goal is. You know, a lot of times, sometimes the goals can be, you know, very big. And mm -hmm. it's like, how am I going to get there? And if you will just take one small action, if you just chunk it out and say, I'm going to do one thing today, whether that's read an article, listen to a podcast, come back for the next show uh, that Jim hosts to uh, figure out what it is that uh, you're supposed to learn. If you just take one small action a day and be consistent over a course of a year, that's 365 actions. And here's the thing. You start building momentum. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes it will happen a lot quicker than you think, but you got to be consistent and you just got to do one small thing a day and it will build and build. Oh yeah, absolutely. That is great advice because just creating a good habit that would uh, keep you going. Dustin, I want to personally thank you so much for joining us today. It, you're, you're a great friend and we, we go back a ways and you know, you always share wonderful knowledge with people. So ladies and gentlemen, please go to DustinMatthews.com. And you got the website right there and say hello to Dustin or email him at Dustin at um, no author at Dustin Matthews.com. Isn't it? And that's your that's email right. address. Yeah, that's author. right. There we go. My well, memory. Jim, thanks, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. I'm excited for the show and, and what you're up to and uh, just a real treat to be here today. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. We'll see you later, brother. You got Bye. it. Bye bye. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go to commercial. We'll be right back right after this brief message. Hi, I'm Angel Marie Monticelli with Angel Marie Shines. And I had the pleasure, the honor, 
to go through training for the six minute webinar. Oh my gosh, this webinar and how it's structured and how they teach it. Thank you, Speakers Pathway Coalition. Thank you, Don McGrath and the whole team for the six minute webinar because you made it so simple, easy. And the way you lined it out with the outline, I can reproduce it and reproduce it. And I'm already getting the engagement. I'm getting people that are coming back that are saying, oh, I love this webinar that's so short, so to the point, and I love your products and what I'm selling, but then what I'm also, the services that I provide, and I do put any of this because I have the framework. So thank you so much to the whole team because the six minute webinar totally rocks. Thank you. Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We were so glad to have Dustin Matthews on with us today. And be sure and visit his website, Dustin Matthews, M A T H E W S dot com. And right now, we got a young lady that I first met on the original uh, webinar series, The Messages of Inspiration and Hope. And she shared a very inspiring story of how, you know, the tragedy that she had to face in losing her 18 year old son, but how she is able to use that to help people in their hour of need. She's a wonderful young lady and just, uh, she's just really has reached out and helped a lot of people. So let's welcome you know, little Judy to the staff. I call her little Judy. I mean, she is. And I think I pronounced your name correctly. Thurston. Is that right? Did I? If that's correct. Oh, okay. Good deal. Well, welcome to the show. My goodness gracious. You've been so kind sitting back there in that musty old back room waiting for us to hush me and Dustin and come on stage and, but uh, would you be kind enough to share a little bit about yourself with the audience, please? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Such an honor to be here. I really enjoyed uh, listening to you and Dustin. Wow. What great <laughs> tips. I was taking notes back here. Um, <laughs> my name is Judy Thurston and I am a grief recovery specialist and a life coach and, and health and wellness. Um, coach, and I've been doing that for about 15 years. And something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, probably since around my son was 16, um, he was struggling with, you know, mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and started to self-medicate. And, you know, we mm -hmm. just went down the road of addiction and substance abuse and um you know as, as a new parent as a young parent with a teenager um you just don't know what to do mm -hmm. <laughs> i was a stupid teenager once so you don't know what what's you know just going through their phase and what's really serious and so we just went through you know battling back and forth of um just his issues and sadly uh last summer june 27th, we lost him to an overdose. And that really mm. prompted my journey to really dive into um, having the conversation, you know, really helping people not suffer in silence and really uh, take away the shame and the stigma of mm -hmm. addiction and mental health. And I think before we, um, when we talked, I was just getting my book out. It had not been published yet, but it came out on July 27th. And I will say that um, since the book has been out, it has already helped so many people. I've gotten emails from young kids after reading the book saying that they are throwing their pills away. They're going to go to rehab. They're, you know, a couple kids said they wanted to kill themselves, but after reading mm -hmm. the book, they just found hope and they didn't feel so alone because I'm very, very open and frank and unfiltered in my book um, about our journey. And I think that is just so important to be honest and um, everything doesn't always have to look, you know, wrapped up in a pretty, pretty red bow. Um, sometimes life is just hard. And I mean, look at where mm -hmm. we are now. 2020 has been a hard year for mm -hmm. everyone. You know, we're all experiencing this together. And as a grief counselor, you know, I'm seeing that 
grief manifests itself in so many different ways, right? Yeah. And so I think a lot of times um, we just don't even recognize it. We're not aware of it. And so mm -hmm. I want to just, by my example, help people kind of feel comfortable about being okay, not to be okay, being okay mm -hmm. to be sad and, and feel their feelings at 100%. So and that's kind of the work that I'm doing right now. And I'm really passionate about it. I'm mm -hmm. very busy. I've been very busy this year promoting my book, coaching, doing, um, you know, meeting with clients, speaking on different platforms, because as you can see, we need it more than ever. And I love what you're doing. Oh, yeah. I love what this show is about to bring inspiration and hope. And man, do we need that more than ever. Well, thank you, Judy. It's uh, like I said, when Dustin was there, you know, you were part of the initial wave. I think you were on the first wave because we've had three different waves of the messages of inspiration and hope. And when we first got started, ladies and gentlemen, all we had was Zoom like everybody else. And we did a Facebook lives and we did a call for speakers. Uh, we made that decision on a Wednesday, March the 18th. On the following Monday, on the 23rd of March, we had our first show. But in 24 hours, we had 60 speakers because people were just wanting to do something. And um, when I when I when I heard Judy's story there, and my goodness, I and it really touched me because I too have lost a child. Our child was an infant when we lost her, but uh, it still hurts the same. But you know. I, I tell you, Judy can tell you that I went out and I contacted her and I says, hey, Judy, would you like to be on my show? Because I knew the value she was going to bring for folks out there, because my goodness gracious, a lot of people are hurting right now. And your book and your story, you can reach out to people. And my goodness gracious, I got your website there. Is, is that correct? JudyThurston.com? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So could they find your book there? Can they find your book on Amazon? Do you have a, do you have a copy of it anywhere handy or, or are you just, I do I okay. have it right here. Good. Beautiful Hold it up tragedy. There. I know it's so mm -hmm. crazy to think that I wrote a book. Um, I was listening to your uh, talk with Dustin earlier about overcoming fear and public speaking mm. and write books. I mean, this is not an easy, easy feat you know it took it yeah. took a lot and i remember at the end i almost took it back and told my husband i don't think i want to do this can we just return everybody's money because i was so petrified um mm -hmm. but i think you know that's when growth happens and that's when you know that what you have um is valuable because it should scare you a little bit to put yourself out there and it should be yeah scary and, and getting you out of your comfort zone, you know? So yeah, mm -hmm. so you can find us on Amazon. You can find it on my website. You can find it on Barnes and Noble. And um, I'm very happy that it's doing well. I'm mm -hmm. very sad the reason it's doing well. I mean, daily I get emails and messages from, from parents or friends saying, you know, my, my friend has a child that's struggling with addiction or mental health or my friend lost their child. And so people are purchasing Purchasing this book to give as a companion for healing yeah. and grief <clears throat> for their mm -hmm. friends and family. That's what I was going to, that's what I was just thinking came to my mind. It'd be a great gift to give someone during this time uh, because, you know, they might, they may not know anything about that book because the way that you can share your story and how you can help them in their hour of need to overcome grief, my goodness gracious, that is a, that is a beautiful gift right there because of all the things that I can do. I am not good at helping someone when they're going through something like that. And I'm just being honest. I just don't have that gift. And I was telling a story on a previous show. We had a young man up in, uh, at the pathway for vets event and I was the MC up there and I had met him over the veterans center and I invited him to the show and all or to the event. And he was, um, uh, I did not know it at the time, but he was homeless and he was on drugs. He was a veteran wow. and he was sleeping under a bridge in Colorado Springs. And we're talking January 2019. Wow. I mean, that's got to be 100 percent miserable. And he got there to the event and he was uh, <laughs> yeah, I believe, you know, Angel Marie Monticelli. You might know her, the shine on lady. You may have heard of her. Anyway, she got up there and she got the shine on dance going and all that. And he was up there at the front on stage with her dancing. I was kind of like, wow, that's kind of nice. I'm kind of glad to see him come out of his shell. But then later on that night, we got ready to leave. I'm walking out the place. We're already closed. And I'm just kind of like, 
relaxing a little bit, being the MC all day. And I'm walking, I hear my name and it was him. And then he sat down and started crying and talking about how horrible daddy's been and how his life is just a mess and how he started. And, and I'm thinking, gosh, what do I say? I mean, I didn't have that gift, Judy. I just didn't. I felt, you know, worthless. And that's a horrible feeling to have. And that's why that's why I'm so glad to have you on the show. That's why I reached out to you because you've got that special gift and you put it in that book. And oh my goodness gracious, you can reach out and touch some people's lives and help them. And that is a very special gift. And uh, I, I just, you know, you know, bless you. And I love it. Love that gift that you got from my heart. I mean, it's just, I tip my hat to you. Fortunately for me, my saving grace, <laughs> Bill Heinrich came by. And Bill is a guy that's really, uh, he's got a gift like that. He's got a great talent. And uh, he's all about energy and love and all that. And I remember Bill, like, Bill, come here, come here. And, and Bill says, and, and the guy, and young man says, I just don't love myself. And Bill said, that's okay. I'm going to love you for you, you know. And uh, just we started reaching him. And fortunately for us, the next day we had a doctor there who specializes in PTSD and drug abuse and all that. We got him introduced to that. Long story short, mm -hmm. he's now, well, I mean, not now, but he's, he's been for some time now, over a year. Uh, he's no longer homeless. He's got a job and he's straightening, you know, slowly recovering because mm -hmm. he's going to, it's a long process. But um, that was a deal where sometimes yeah. the, you know, the energy puts you in a place to be a blessing to someone. Yes, but yes, that was yes. all that was all I could do because when it comes to reaching out to him and giving him comfort, I just felt so inadequate. I gotta be honest. I, I just just didn't know what to say. And yeah. well don't don't underestimate yourself because really what a griever needs the most is a heart with ears. Mm -hmm. A heart with ears. The grievers, mm -hmm. uh, people that are grieving don't need to be fixed. They're not broken. They yeah. just need someone to listen to them with dignity and respect. And it sounds like that's exactly what you did. And so, you know, that, that that's something we can all do, right? We oh, can yeah. all do that. Yeah. We can all sit and listen and, and just be there. Um, healing happens in community. And that's why mm -hmm. right now is such a hard time because we're so isolated from each other. And even though we have yeah. this gift of video and we can see each other, there's nothing like just being side by side with someone physically you know and yeah. i think um, we underestimate that that that's really mm -hmm. what helps heal is people feeling like they're not alone and that they have community mm -hmm. and that they have safe people around them that they can be open and honest with and so i already know that that's your gift jim because you just do oh. such a great job even when you interview people making them feel so comfortable so well well thank really you good. and I wanted to kind of like bear myself out there for folks in okay, case someone could say, Hey, Jim, I know what you're talking about. But I mean, if you're, if, if I, if I know someone in their hour of need that needs some help, I'm going to refer them to Judy. And I'm going to say, Hey, you need to get Judy's book. If you don't have it, I'll buy it and give it to you. But also to, to email Judy, um, that would be, is that your email address there? Would you check my spelling? I flunked the English in high school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is it. And I respond to every email. I mean, I'm fielding messages, mm -hmm. calls, emails all the time. You know, Jacob, my son, he was a recording artist. And so wow. we kind of inherited his platform. He was a rapper. He was on a, you know, Atlantic Records on a big record label. And so mm -hmm. we just got his um, stats from Spotify streaming music. Mm -hmm. And just this year, he had over 3 million streams from his song. So Wow. It's really amazing how mm -hmm. much his music touched people from over 90 countries. Oh, and so yeah. my husband and I, we get, you know, calls and messages from his fans, from different families. And, you know, we do our best to reach out because we feel like mm -hmm. with even even though we lost Jacob, I feel like we inherited, you know, this big family now of people that mm. feel like they can talk to us, people that feel like they can reach out to us. And so, so here too, anybody that wants to, you know, reach out and maybe have questions or just need an ear, we're totally here. So Yeah, absolutely. One of the things too, that's amazing in life is you go down the pathway of life and you do little things and you don't think much about it. And then people tell you later, you know, when they see you, wow, I remember when you did this or you said this or whatever, and you go like, 
Okay. I mean, to, it, it didn't seem like a big deal to the, you know, the individual at that, at that time, but it made a big impression on the people as you travel down the pathway of life. And I know good and well, you can just, we could sit back for about a half an hour and listen to you tell a lot of stories like that because you've definitely reached out and touched some people, haven't you? Yes. And it's very humbling. And it's very, mm. like, and I totally agree with what you said. I just got a message a couple of days ago and it was this kid who back in January was having a panic attack. And I remember talking through some things with him and um, he, you know, messaged me like nine months later and said, wow, that conversation really was changed the trajectory of my life. And after that conversation, I got help and I got therapy and I'm doing so much better now. And, wow. and I honestly even forgot I had that conversation with yeah. him, you know, so yeah. to your point, that's exactly true. Is we can't yeah. underestimate, you know, just showing up for people and just being there and um, connecting with them. So yeah, yeah it's, it's very humbling. Um, but I'm very grateful that we can yeah. be used in that way. Because, you know, at this point in my life, really, um, I feel very passionate about keeping Jacob's legacy going and being mm -hmm. really using that as a, as a platform and as a fuel to my purpose now, right, using sure. the pain for for my purpose. And so it has been um, very, very tragic and very painful, but also mm -hmm. beautiful, right? So that's why the name yeah. of the book is Beautiful Tragedy, because we can all find beauty even in our worst, you know, worst moments. And so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's uh, being able to share, you know, what you've been through and and helping people that uh, are going that don't know what what to do. They're just, you know, gripped with fear and gripped with loss that's a horrible feeling to, to have. And that's a horrible position to be in. And you're the kind of person who can just reach out and you can just touch them and change their life. My goodness, Judy, that is just a tremendous gift. And, you know, I just, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I went out and I contacted her and I said, Hey, Judy, would you like to be on my show? And uh, because I knew of the value she'd be bringing and I knew that she's going to be touching a lot of people's lives. And Judy, I tell you, you're, you're very good at helping people grow and you're a very good coach and you're a very good motivational speaker. You're very positive. It just seems to vibrate out of you. I mean, how did all that come about? I mean, just, just how'd you become such a great coach and all? Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, you, it's funny because actually it happened um, when I, when I was pregnant with Jacob. So mm -hmm. that was, but almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I had extreme anxiety. I struggled mm -hmm. with PTSD. Um, I had panic attacks. I petrified of public speaking. I mean, all you name it, I was just a hot mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I remember um, just, first of all, what I had to do back then was just turn off the news. Because when you're a young mom watching the news, it just put so much fear in me of, Oh my gosh, you know, someone's going to take my baby or something bad's going to happen to my So the first thing I had to do was I just turned the news off, which is mm -hmm. still good advice right now. Turn the news <laughs> off. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the thing that really changed my life is I, mm -hmm. I started a gratitude practice, an intentional gratitude practice where every morning before I even step foot off of my bed is I thought about three things that I was grateful for. And then as soon as I went to bed that night, I would think about three things that happened in that day that I was grateful for. So it's like this gratitude mm. sandwich. And it was this consistent habit, this practice that really trained myself how to always look at kind of the bright side and look at the things yeah. and framing life in a way that, because we're all going to go through stuff and, and life's going to suck sometimes, but you can still <laughs> frame it frame it in a way that you can find the gratitude in it right and so oh, yeah. i honestly believe that that has been um it become nat it's come natural now to me because i've been practicing mm -hmm. it so um you know daily and so consistently that um it's like a muscle if you use it it gets stronger right and if you don't use it it's easy to lose so, mm. um, so gratitude is really a, a great, and now even science has kind of caught up with us, right? There's a lot of neuroscience behind 
the practice of gratitude, that it actually rewires your brain. It changes mm. the atmosphere in the room. And so when you come in contact with someone who has a positive or gra grateful attitude, you feel it, right? You feel their presence, you feel their energy. And so I love that, you know, science is now catching up to to that idea that positivity and gratitude actually changes our brain chemistry. Absolutely. Because I tell people, you know, a lot of times when I wake up, I'm kind of a simple old country boy in many ways, but I kind of think, wow, you know, I got heartbeat in my veins, I got breath in my lungs, and there's coffee in the kitchen. I mean, that's three winners right there for me because I'm a coffee holic. And, <laughs> but, you know, you know, we value yes. the things that money can buy, but not the things that money can't buy. I mean, you know, if you don't wake up in the morning with heart beating in your veins and breath in your lungs, you're not going to have a good day. I mean, <laughs> you can forget the coffee break. That's over too. <laughs> but, you know, if we, if we just look at that and think about, thank you, you know, just give thanks for, you know, having, you know, having the ability to get up and just, you know, and just do some some positive things. If it's work in the garden or if it's, I like to go out and work on my tractor sometimes or something like that, or just do something that I like to do. And sometimes being a guy, I like to fiddle around, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to do that and, and give thanks. I mean, one day I, I started getting into this and I need to get more, get back into it more, to be honest with you. But I started giving thanks for all the little things in life. And I was telling a friend of mine, mm -hmm. I said, you know, one day I went out to cut some uh, firewood, okay? And the I got the uh, chainsaw cranked up and all that, and we cut a lot of firewood, about a cord and a half that day, and I was pretty tired. I, like I told the guys, I'm about half tired. I'm going to quit before I get the other half tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, I really gave thanks to the Lord for my chainsaw, uh, crank, you know, firing up and cranking. He says, you did that? And I said, yeah. I said, because that thing used to be, by the time you get it cranked from pulling on it 29 times, you'd almost be wore out, you know? <laughs> and that thing fired right up. So that's something to be thankful for. Yes, yeah, the little victories in life that you need to be thankful for. And if you develop that kind of a habit, everything else, all the big things fall right into place, don't they? That's right. And if, I mean, if 2020 has taught us anything, mm. is that there, there are a lot of things to be thankful for. And there's a lot of things that we we took for granted that we miss so much, right? Like going out to a restaurant yeah. or, or going to see our family. And so it actually helps us to be more grateful, right? And so we, we can reframe that instead of getting frustrated and getting mad or sad about, wow, I can't do this. Really looking at it as, wow, I'm so grateful that I can now see the value of what I'm missing. And so that when mm -hmm. that time does come, when I can do that again, man, oh, I'm yeah. just not going to take that for granted. I'm going to be so oh, yeah. excited to do that. Mm -hmm. And Judy, you also do one on one coaching and group coaching. Would you share a little bit about that? How you, you know, how people get in touch with you to do that? And how do you do that now during 2020 with everything being more virtual than physical? But yeah, I mean, I have been so busy this year doing group online coaching. It's mm -hmm. called Self Care Soul Care. I do it with my partner, Vicki, and it's just been such a blessing because, again, what we need more than ever is self care. And how do you mm -hmm. do that? How do you do that when you're stressed? How do you do that when you're full of anxiety and living in this world of uncertainty. Um, and we need that. We need to prioritize that because that helps our, our mental health, our physical health. You know, mm -hmm. we need to value our health more than ever. Um, and then the soul care is like, what are the things that we really um, can, can, can look at and think about that's bigger than ourselves, right? And so we do that quarterly. And so uh, we have group coachings um, every season. And you can find all that on my website, um, judythurston.com. And I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I do relationship coaching. And it's mm. just something I'm very passionate about. I love to see the gold in people. Like I love mm. to, you know, when people come to me and they feel like, oh, you can't help me because I'm, I'm such a mess. I, I, I love to be able to dig in there and see gold and the diamonds in people because I truly believe every single person is valuable and have so oh, much yeah. to offer and there's so much inside of people that sometimes we just need that outside you know observation and perspective to be able to bring it out of them and so 
Mm -hmm. Like that's something that I, I, I really get excited about and it just motivates me and um, and I have just amazing clients and just to be able to see them grow and flourish during this time um, mm -hmm. has been such a blessing. Oh, thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can fully understand why I reached out and got, and got Judy and says, hey, would you like to be on my show? As in, please, would you like to be on my show? It's pretty pleased. Would you come to be on my show? Because she's just a tremendous lady. And I'm going to ask her again to pick up that book and hold it right in front of the camera so people can see that wonderful book that she wrote. Beautiful. Hold it a little bit closer, please. Bring it a little bit closer to the camera. There you go. Beautiful tragedy. Oh, my goodness. And uh, it's a wonderful book. And how many years, how long did it take you to write that beautiful book to compile it and all? Would you say? I mean, it's kind of a, it's a long story and it's all in the book, but I basically had a dream. Mm -hmm. And in my dream, the voice said to me, you are a writer. And I, you know, I said, what, what are you talking about? And the voice said again, you are a writer and not in an encouraging tone it was almost angry like stop making excuses and write this mm. book and so that was september 9th by september 27th i had written 20 uh, 40 chapters over forty five thousand words in 18 days which wow. is totally a miracle but there Man. was a lot that needed to come out and it was just i can't even explain it it was supernatural mm. really is what it yes. was and so yeah, that's 18 that's days, 40 chapters. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I do good to read 40 chapters in 18 days, you know. But no, I'm just kidding about that. But I could when you were saying that, I could just picture the energy just you know flowing through you, just getting this thing done because the the value of what your written word is going to do in helping others in their hour of need. That's that was the mission, and that was the driving force behind it. And uh Judy, I'm gonna um give you just the last minute and a half there before we uh, have to sign off, but would you just share anything you'd like to with the, with the public? Uh, you could talk about someone that you'd like to meet or something on your bucket list or just anything you like. The stage is yours. Uh, well, I just wanted to just encourage everyone listening that, you know, overcoming adversity and building resilience doesn't happen in these, big, gigantic, you know, tragedies or instances, right? And so people ask me all the time, when I lost Jacob, how was I able to get through that and write a book and still be coaching people and still show up? Um, it, it's not because I'm some superhero or anything like that. It was because of all the little points in the way of, of the journey that built resilience, that built, you know, um, confidence. Every time you go through adversity every time you overcome fear you're building um, i call it your resilience reservoir you're putting resilience in your reservoir right and so that when the big things happen you have something to take out of that so i just want to encourage all of us that don't be uh, don't underestimate the little things so every every day that you overcome one little thing man you're putting that in your reservoir because sadly all of us are going to experience some kind of grief or tragedy mm -hmm. all of us i mean right now we're experiencing that globally and how we're going to respond to that is going to be an indicator of how we respond to the little things along the way Absolutely. so just you know enjoy the journey enjoy the journey you know it, the things happen to all of us and um, just know that you have tools, you have people, you have community and uh, I'm here for you guys. So I'm excited to be here and I'm so grateful. Always such an honor to be with you, Jim. Well, thank you. The honor is all mine today because uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see having Judy on the show uh, was really an asset for the folks out there. And that's what this show's all about. It's about providing good infotainment for folks. And I know that Judy has touched some hearts out there. So please get in touch with Judy. You can email her there, uh, Judy Thurston at, uh, at uh, hotmail.com. And uh, please get in touch with her. She's a wonderful lady, and she'll be glad to help you. I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. Please share the show with others. Mm -hmm. Judy, I got to salute you, girl. I love everything you do. I love you in your, my heart. And you're just a very, very, very special lady. I appreciate you and thank, thank you, you again.
Thank you again for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll Thank see you, you tomorrow. Thank you for having me. You bet. We'll see you tomorrow. Good, goodbye. Thank you for watching our show. To learn more about the messages of inspiration and hope, the six minute webinar and our host and staff, check out our website. On behalf of Jim and our guests, I'm Charlene Fouts. Tell a friend about our show and thanks for watching.